be big game at the weekend. It's the first old firm of the season. And you know what it's like. How was your preparations for those games? I was quite regimental getting into the games. It was always the week before, this, the fixture before, which was really important, that we get told, usually through Walter, it's a must win. We need to win that with momentum getting in. My preparation was trying to train well during the week. Clean diet, because you know, come when that whistle goes at the start of the game, you don't want to have any regrets in your head. So it was pretty clean week, good bit of training, lots of hydration and try to stay away from the press mm -hmm. and as mentally focused as possible on the just game. Just out the head. Uh, what I was yours? the same, like, I was, yeah, just in that sort of bubble where you didn't even want to speak to your friends or anything. Yeah. It was easier as a player than a manager, <laughs> trust me. You know, <laughs> the managing's um, a lot more stressful, a lot more fraught. But playing ways, my first one was a. I was lucky, like, because it was a semi final of the League Cup and then a, a game at Celtic Park, so we had back to back games. But Martin O'Neill told me it'll be a blur, and it was. First 45 minutes was just, you know, the pace of the game was incredible. And then obviously, with the second game coming up, then you were a bit more sort of aware yes. of what was coming. Like, the first know? one, I, I remember, it seems to, just as you're saying, it fly in. Yeah. But the occasion and the atmosphere having the away fans there and obviously whatever you're playing in front of the home crowd it's just, it's just noise it's bedlam it's like you can't get much communication on the pitch can you because of the noise no. levels we used to practice not speaking <laughs> seriously you know so you had to like um, not even waving or anything just had to do your movements like and hopefully know where you your teammate was going to make eye contact with you because you're right, you can't. And sometimes players would rubber ear me. <laughs> even if, yeah, we, if, if, even if they couldn't hear me, I'd be like, bear on, bear on. <laughs> so it was one of them. Um, I, I don't know about you, but my preference was Ibrox. I like playing at Ibrox more than I actually did at Celtic Park. I don't know why. It was just, in, I don't know, maybe because you're going into the sort of cauldron, like, and, you know, there's a lot more supporters there, but. I just enjoyed that one more. Than, do, you think, uh, do you think that might be because of the margin for error? If you got on the ball at Celtic Park and say you give it away or, or cost a chance or something, but on top of yeah, you, where possibly. away from home you might get away from it because there's only a smaller section. Yeah, possibly, yeah. And seven times, eight times out of ten, if you're the away team, you're probably the underdog. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Aye. You know, I know Celtic have had a bit of domination over the last sort of five or six years but back when I was playing and when you were playing there wasn't much between the teams either way yeah. like you know so it was always like you know you had your backup going there yeah you know and uh you know you just wanted the it was a and you know you've won there at Celtic Park and I've won at Ibrox there's no better feeling really no it's a cauldron of the atmosphere is absolutely there's nothing like it, it. and I think the fact that they've taken the away fans from the fixture takes a big bit away it's wasted it. it for me. It's Damn wasted me. it. That, like, if, let, let's say when Ibrox and Celtic used to get the full stand yeah. behind the goals, it's amazing. Yeah. Because of the noise coming for there, but then you'd still the other three. And, and same at Celtic Park, they got a great big bit at the goal and at the corner flag, and you could hear them at yeah. times. And it was but, that's what made. But it was the colour as well, mate. Yes. You know what I mean? And it's the rivalry, and it was just fantastic feeling. Like, you still like get a. Especially as a manager, you wake up in the morning, you'd, you'd have the, you know, the butterflies in the stomach, and you know. As a manager, did you sleep? Like, is it? Oh, yeah, it was important to sleep. You know, it really was. But it was important that you got all your preparation done, and then you could sleep because you, you know, you, you don't want to think, oh, have I missed something here? Or I know the team, I know the way we want to play. We've done the, all the work on it, so, bang, switch your phone off. Yeah. Because you know what it's like. Text messages, uh, leave you any tickets? Tickets, I knew you were going to say tickets. But see, see a question as a manager, were you wary of trying to do too much? Yes. Because of the importance of the game yes. as well, so you to draw back? Yeah, I am. Um, certainly in my early years, I definitely, you know, you, you're trying to do everything and be all things to all people and tick all the boxes, but it's impossible to do that. Yeah. And then you have a sort of set routine after a while where you know, right, this is where we're going to prepare, this is the team got the subs lined up and this is where we're going to approach the game and then that's it yeah you know, switch you gotta switch off because you know the only time you really do enjoy it as a manager anyway is when the whistle goes really you know? oh yeah when the, you know, i thought it have been worse no the whistle because you're you're focused on the game and you can actually be spontaneous whereas 
your mental approach before the game is you're always thinking, well, what happens here? And what about this scenario? Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Whereas as soon as the game goes, and you're, and you're in real totally time invested then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So you're the manager on Saturday of this first Old Firm game of the season. What would your tactics be? Just in general, I don't mean in depth. What would your... To quell the crowd. Yeah. You know, I think it's really important that, um, you know, you don't, if, uh, from a Celtic point of view, you don't let Rangers get ahead of steam up and uh, get the crowd really sort of um, swarming them forward. And the Rangers can be very, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Formidable at home. Yeah. You know, they've, they've shown that in Europe. You know, they're a good performance against PSV, um, who are a very good side, and they came away with a good performance and a, a decent result. So my my interest would be, you know, try and keep the ball as far away from the goal as possible. And try so and would that be a little bit half. more direct? And yeah, why not? To get a well, throw certainly, in certainly turn them. I, yeah. I did that in the last one at Ibrox, and we won two nil. And we basically took the took the centre, and we kicked it right in the corner. Jake. It's becoming more common that nowadays in, in British football. Yeah. I'm finding it's like playing for territory early on yeah. in the match. You play the game in their half. I watched early. Liverpool yesterday again. Newcastle kick off back, bump into yeah. the channel, and then you play your 50-50 football, and it it works. It worked that day for us. You know, we we were camped in for a long period of time. We kept the crowd really, really quiet. So I think that's really important for Celtic to do that on mm -hmm. Sunday. Yep. Yeah. What are you thinking of Brendan? He start sorry to his second spell in the. Well, it's a little. It, I don't think it's his team yet, so yeah. I think you want to bring players in and. Um, I um, I think they'll they'll give him the finances to do that. So you want to put his own imprint on the on the squad. At the minute they're a little bit flat. You know they're not playing the sort of football that we're accustomed to. But I think that will come. And there's no better game f than a old firm game. It's really important for both the coaches. Yes. I think. You know, for Michael, it's huge. Because this could be the turning point. Huge. For, for, you, you mentioned it before, the Celtic have had a dominance the last, I don't know how many years. But for Michael, being relatively new into the job uh, as Rangers manager, um, no trophies last year. Mm. There could be a bit of a marker laid down from, from him. No, I totally agree with you. I think this is Michael's, up to now, the biggest week of his career. Yeah. You know, and... Obviously, there's a lot riding on the Champions League, but I don't think in the bigger picture it's the most important thing for Rangers. I think the most important thing is to wrestle back the championship. He did really well the second half of the season, but the most important games he lost. Yes. And that was Celtic. Yeah. Semi-final, you know, League yeah. Cup final. And he has, to, he has to sort of correct that. Otherwise, it's going to be a case of, you know what it's like, there's so much expectation going into these games, and if they don't win, then it's... Oh no, here we go again. Yes. But, but Brendan coming in, it's different circumstances to the first time. I think, you know, Celtic on a little bit of a downer after Ronnie left and Brendan came in and had a, a massive impact. This time, you know, he's taken over a travel uh, winning team with a yeah. manager who was very popular with the supporters. So he's maybe not had the same impact that he had the first time. And everything's different anyway, Lee. You know, when you come yeah. in the second time, it'll be obviously not his players. So he'll want to put an imprint on that eventually. I think the Champions League is a huge carrot for him, but obviously they want to retain the title. They're already out of the League Cup. The title is most important. Of course it is, yeah. It? Uh, for me, the priority was always title, Champions League, yeah. Europe, Scottish Cup, League Cup. Yeah. You know, and I think Brendan will uh, sort of approach it that way as well. What do you think about the, f the, the certain fans that I've heard that are wanting this Ange ball back, which, let's not overcomplicate it, the fullbacks going in, inverted fullbacks they call it. But Brendan coming in, having won a cup in England, having nearly won the English Premiership before, he's, he's got his own style, he's his own manager, and he's got the CV to back it up. He wanted to play his own way. So do the fans need to get their head round that? They don't do have think? to, yeah. Well, yeah, but uh, I don't think he'd want to change too much. Look, I don't think there's much difference for Ange player and Brendan player. Yeah, know? they are, but I'm just I mean? saying from the fans' yeah, perspective. But the, yes. the, it's a totally, you know, mute point, I think. Yeah. You know, everyone has their own way of playing, you know, Walter, his style, Gordon Strack and Martin O'Neill, yep. Alec McLeish, all these great managers had their, their own way of playing and the other thing was the adapt, you know, sometimes you adapt <laughs> to the squad of players that you have, yep. I think at times Brendan will go three at the back, you know, because he can play that sort of hybrid sort of style of football, but it's all sort of, again, new and there's, there's definitely a little bit of a hangover from Ange leaving and uh, once Brendan, you know, gets his own imprint and he's a class manager, puts his own style, I think the fans will 
you know, come round it. Look, it's all about winning games, isn't it? Yes. It's always the same as a manager. Yeah, I think if you look at Michael Beale at the end of last season, his tactics, let's say, in-game tactics, he'd have formation in possession and out of possession. Now, my point being here, whether that worked or not, how, as a young coach manager, uh, on your experience, how important are tactics or to, to go and win a game? Listen, I was always brought up, tactics don't win games, players yes, do. exactly. You know, and you do have, uh, and you know what it's like, you know, in gamely you change. Yeah. You, or sometimes if you're, you have to adapt to maybe the opposition or they adapt to you, but it's not the be on the end all. You know, I always thought that managers looked at the squad of players that they had in rent rate, the good ones, right, this is the way we can go with this group of players, this is the way I want to go. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know exactly what you're saying. You do the, the coaching badges when you're, when you're younger, or the B licence, A licence, and you get young coaches coming up doing a presentation saying, this is my philosophy. Mm -hmm. It's got to be 4 2 three, one, and we're playing out for the back. What happens if your centre-half can't handle the exactly. ball, but he's a really good defender? Exactly. So that puts them out the window. window. So good managers adapt to their squads. Is yes. that what you're that's what, I, yeah. that's what I look at it, and Brendan will come in and go, OK, I've got this squad of players. What do I need to improve it? Do I need two positions here? Yeah, bring them in and we'll go with this way. Or in-game, can we sort of be flexible with our tactics? And you see it all the time. You know, Guardiola, right, has gone from players that big <laughs> to giants like yourself. Do you know what yeah. I mean? If you look at his Man City team now, it's yeah. huge. You know, right through the middle of the team, uh, the back four or back three, whatever you call it. And I don't think there's a set way of playing it. <coughs> Honestly, I really don't. Some managers will come in and go, we're playing this way, like uh, Roy Hodgson will play 4 4 2 and that'll be it. But my philosophy is, if you want to call it that, is determine as many games as you possibly yes, can. Yes, win. I think that's what. Uh, the performances will come. The more games you win, the more confidence it breeds and the more players believe in what you're doing. But if you're playing brilliant football and losing 4 3 every week, all of a sudden the chairman goes, <laughs> can we get a result here? Exactly. The football's great, but can we get a result? I wanted to ask you, right? Um, who are the key players for Sunday? I think it's the key players are the ones that have been there. I think you, the the newer players will be will be leaning on to Vernet, Goldson, possibly even Suter with, with the experience. The new signings <coughs> that have come in that there's a lot of fans debating about. It's, it's early, you know what it's like new mm -hmm. signing coming in. You, they don't always hit the ground no, running. They, don't. they need a bit of time to to settle in. I think this could really make them and kick them on. Uh, mentality and confidence level wise so it all depends on the tactics that, that Michael will play after after the, the week yeah, that yeah. they've had the PSV game will they sit in I don't think they can afford to with the Rangers crowd I think they need to go they're going to need to go front foot and press the game therefore they need energy so you've got like, yeah, you, uh, Sima could possibly play Danilo Dessers but again that's three new signings is he going to take the gamble of doing that or Play tried and tested. I think Cantwell's going to be a big player yeah. to, to retain the ball, create chances. He, I think he scored um, in the Old Firm game at the end of last season. Um, Do but you think he'll go Ryan Jack? I think he's got to go Ryan Jack for a bit of stability. Mm -hmm. He might go Ryan Jack and Lundstrom um, just to back it up and let the rest of them just go and attack. And you, you've got that box there sitting with the two centre yeah. halves for security. So. I don't know if both managers quite yet know what their start, best starting eleven is. No, I agree. I'm, pre I'm pretty sure Brendan doesn't. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Uh, at the minute, so he'll be looking at McGregor. You know, he'll be hoping maybe one of the centre halves, Carter Vickers, will be fit, but I don't think he will. Joe Hart, obviously, you know, you need your goalkeeper in these big games yeah. as well to pull off saves and important moments. And Kyogo, Kyogo's key. I. Um, you know, he's just a little bit flat at the minute as the rest of them are. But this is the sort of game that, as you say, can open up the season. Yeah. Now, it'll open it up for one of the teams and certainly one of the managers. And, you know, there's a ma when you lose, there's a massive hangover. Oh. Because there's an expectation, Lee, on beating Hearts, on beating Motherwell, on beating Ross County. There's, you know, people, old firm fans, take those games for granted. These are the ones you have to win, and these are the ones you remembered for. Yes, I know. I think I think that's you. You said it right there. The ones that you remembered for of of winning in the big games, and if from a Rangers perspective, which has been a little bit doom and gloom for the past six, twelve yeah. months, whatever it's been, if all of a sudden they get the result and go and win, and they go ahead in points, 
confidence, energy, everything comes back. Of course it does. Doesn't it? And then the other side of it is you're saying you need to show that resilience and that's where the mental strength comes in if you're not getting the, the results in the old firm fixtures, as you know. No, big time. There's so... I mean, a lot of people say it'll come down to these four games. It did last season. I don't think it will this season. You know, Kilmarnock have already taken points off Rangers and Johnson have taken points off Celtic. But you know what's like, once the two of them get ahead of steam up as the season goes on, you know, these these games are pivotal. But I just think for Michael, more than anything, he needs a win in this yeah. one. For people to really buy into what he's doing. Yeah, completely agree with you. Um, predictions? <sighs> I, uh, but Celtic aren't playing great at the minute, so they need a big performance. I think the, um, I'm going to go 2-1 Celtic, because I've got my Celtic hat on. Um, but I'm not overly confident on that. You? I think, as in a lot of the old firm games, the first goal is really, Crucial. really, yeah. really important. And it's I a great think shout. If, if, if Rangers use the fans in the atmosphere, because Celtic aren't free-flowing, where they should be, in my opinion, I'll go for a narrow 1-0 Rangers. Okay. With my Rangers hat on, obviously. 